Hello everyone, today we will start one new topic which is tensile testing. <coughs> In last classes what we have seen, we have discussed that the yarn characteristics we can test by its linear density or there are various other characteristics, fiber characteristics we have seen which we have seen that by length we can express, we can measure the length and related characteristics, length variation. Then we have seen that the fineness of yarn we can test by various methods and maturity of cotton we have discussed and then linear density of yarn. Now in this topic we will discuss the tensile testing. Here tensile testing it is actually divided into three distinct categories. One is in the tensile testing of fiber, next is tensile testing of yarn and then tensile testing of fabric. So, three different me measurement techniques, but if we see the basic principles, basic theories of all these three types of testings are almost same. We get similar parameters, we will discuss all these aspects in this session. So, why tensile testing of textile materials are important? Okay. So, why do you know, why do you want to know the tensile characteristics? It is just to know the level of strength provided by the material. Okay. What is the strength of the material? Okay. That we must know because at which load it will fail that it must know but the that particular value it is very important for industrial and technical products. Okay. This is very important because in those applications this strength breakage of material it is extremely we, are, we should know that it is extremely important to know because that like let us take example of rope. In rope if we do not know the it is breaking strength or stress strain characteristics then it may fail during its actual use. So, any industrial application like filter fabric or may be geotextiles we must know the strength characteristics, it is breaking strength, it is elongation. So, all these characteristics we must know, but for apparel application, household appli applications. So, this importance although we must know the tensile characteristics, but its importance is not that as in case of industrial textiles. Okay. So, because in household or apparel we never apply that level of force where it breaks. So, merely it is needed to for adequate strength is needed. So, in during handling it should actually the product should not fail. Okay. In order to withstand handling 
during production and use like we need that much strength of yarn so that it should not break during weaving so that much so we if we have excess strength by imparting by using various very sophisticated very actually high tenacity fiber that means we will unnecessarily add to its cost so for fab for fab fabrics for apparel application we don't need that much strength but for technical application definitely for like composite making we must use yarn or fabric with very high strength so in those applications it's extremely important to know the actual strength even strength related characteristics now let us see what are the factors which affect the strength of textile material first is that molecular structure of fiber so if the orientation molecular orientation is high then its stress strain characteristics will totally differ will change so higher molecular orientation will result better strength characteristics number and intensity of weak places so if the weak places are high so basically strength of any material is the strength of its weak point so a uh, yarn with say lower mean length let us see this is the mean value okay one yarn this is the length along the yarn okay along the yarn suppose this is one yarn even yarn okay even yarn yarn a another yarn which is uneven yarn yarn b now the yarn a has got this is the strain value okay breaking stress so this yarn a if we see theoretically at each and every point okay that the strength it will be approximately same because this yarn is uniform and number of fibers in the cross section of the yarns are same so this yarn has got almost uniform strength along the length at different point if we test strength here at this point at different point the strength will be almost same but if we test the yarn b suppose this yarn we have produced with a very good fiber it's a very strong fiber so at different point this yarn strength will be different suppose mean strength is very high okay so strength is higher than the strength a strength of yarn a so but what we have observed that few points where due to unevenness there will be weak points are there okay so the few weak points are there and when we test it doesn't matter the other places it's very strong it will break only at the weak point so that's how the yarn will fail okay so the num number and intensity of weak places will result weaker yarn okay so that's why the yarn which is uniform yarn with relatively lower strength is preferable okay and which is better than the yarn with higher mean strength 
but it is non uniform coarseness or fineness of fiber. So, coarser fiber will result just let us see. So, cross section of two yarn okay, A B of same count yarn A is made of the coarser fiber. coarser fiber and yarn B is made of fine fiber. The linear density of these two yarns are same as this yarn, yarn B is made of finer fiber. So, number of fibers are more and also the specific surface area, surface contact of fibers in yarn B is much more than yarn A. So, that due to the finer fiber. So, the yarn strength relation will be more in case of B. Third factor is relative humidity and temperature. So, as we know textile material most of the textile materials absorb moisture okay, the hygroscopic in nature and there are fibers like cotton which with the increase with the absorption of humidity the strength increases, but on the other hand fibers like viscous rayon after absorbing moisture the strength drops. So, the relative humidity of the during testing if it varies then the for same yarn will get different results and also temperature although not directly affect, but if it is too high, too high temperature very high temperature then fiber may get degraded and it affect the strength. Also it is too low at too low temperature say sub zero temperature at that temperature. So, sometime few polymeric fiber they may be brittle and it affects the strength characteristics. So, relative humidity and temperature we must maintain. So, that is why the it is suggested that to test the yarn or any textile material under standard atmospheric condition. Next is the elasticity, elasticity also affect the strength characteristics of material we will discuss all these characteristics. When an external force is applied to any material and it is balanced by the internal force developed in the molecular structure, okay. that is how we get stress strain characteristics. Man made fibers are usually tested for their individual strength. So, the fibers we can test in two ways in the single form and in the bundle form. Okay. So, most of the man made fibers we get in the long continuous length form that is why it is easy to test in the sing individual fiber, fiber strength. Okay. We can test as there is a very less variation in length and fineness of the so, it is available in a long fiber and continuous condition and in the man made fiber another advantage is that it is a uniform in nature and in the in terms of fineness. Okay. So, as we have seen earlier, so this is a man made fiber. And another is it is a natural fiber like cotton. Now, it is easy to test the fiber in the single fiber form. The 
advantage of man made fiber is that it is diameter wise the, towards the length, length wise it is totally uniform. Okay. So, across the total uh, the diameter the cross sectional shape or diameter is same throughout the length, but in case of cotton it varies. So, if we test the cotton in single fiber form, so it will always break at the weakest point, because variation in diameter, so variation in all these parameters fineness, so it will always break in its weakest point. So, we will end up with a value which is much lower than the its capability. And another reason is that here in man made fiber as I have mentioned that it is available in continuous form. So, to minimize this variability what we must do we must take a number of fiber together. So, bundle of fibers we take together and then we test like in bundle form suppose this is a cotton, cotton we do not test the fiber in single form, because it is also very difficult to handle a single fiber of short length. Instead of that we take a bundle of fiber this is type bundle then try to break the bundle and try to measure the bundle and after that by simple calculation we can convert it to fiber tenacity, fiber strength characteristics. So, natural fibers are tested for their bundle strength due to high variation in terms of length and fineness. So, that is the reason why natural fibers are tested in bundle form. It may be cotton, may be jute, uh, different natural fibers. Okay. So, in bundle strength a bunch of fibers are put into a jaw, two jaws are there. So, by gripping with the two jaws, so bundle of fibers are put then we try to break the fiber and measure the breaking strength. The jaws are moved out until the fibers are breaking the breaking load and elongation at break are noted okay. and tenacity of bundle in terms of gram per takes is, con is measured is equal to the breaking load in kg multiplied by length of the sample length of the bundle. We can measure the length of the bundle different test instrument their bundle length is fixed. Okay. So, that if we know the bundle the length of the bundle and then what we have to do after breaking we have to take the mass of the bundle. So, in bundle strength testing we have to take the mass of the bundle and then we can convert the strength in terms of gram per text. So, there are various instruments those who are measuring for measuring the strength and elongation characteristics of bundle. One of them is stelometer. Okay. In stelometer it the name came from strength and elongation S T from strength E L O E L O is from elongation. So, the stelometer which measures the strength and elongation of fiber bundle and which works on pendulum lever principle. So, we will discuss the details in the, the principle of this instrument. Another instrument is there, it is a Presley fiber strength tester. Presley fiber strength tester also works uh, for also measures the fiber bundle strength tester, but here the working principle is the beam balance principle. Okay. 
it is a pivoted beam balance principle. The, these two instruments stellometer and Presley fiber strength tester their calculations are exactly same. Even their fiber jaws are interchangeable. Okay? So, that is why a bundle of fibers that jaw can is interchangeable. We can use the Presley jaw also in stellometer sometimes. And another instrument that we have mentioned earlier also in high volume instrument HVI we test in bundle form, but not like the bundle will not be like Presley or strength a stellometer here bundle will be like the comb directly the comb which has been used for the fiber length measurement that same comb is used for breaking it breaks the fiber in comb form. Okay. So, that is in bundle form. Okay. These are the three instruments which measures the fiber uh, particularly cotton fiber in terms of uh, bund uh, in the form of bundle. Now, we will discuss the different terminologies which is which are used to express the tensile characteristics of textile materials. And these terminologies are few terminologies are specially for textile materials, but many other terminologies those are for in general any engineering material we can use. First is that breaking load or breaking strength. This is very general terminology. It is a load at which the specimen breaks. Okay. That is the breaking load. Simple that is uh, it measures for fiber it is a centinewton or newton. So, that type of load any load measure the it is at the at which the specimen breaks. Then stress, stress for any engineering material with specific cross sectional area is measured by force per unit cross sectional area. Okay. But in case of textile material as we have discussed already while discussing the fineness or linear density measurement, the fibers or any textile materials they are not circular in nature or a or as a matter of fact of any normal specific size no, neither it is a circular nor rectangular or it is the, the cross sectional shape is totally random. So, in case of textile material we cannot use the stress in terms of cross sectional area load per cross sectional area. So, cross section of fibers yarns and fabrics are irregular. So, exact cross section cross sectional area of fibers yarns and fabrics is very difficult to measure we cannot measure exactly. Okay. So, we cannot use the term the in terms of the stress in terms of mass force per unit cross sectional area. So, this is the typical stress load elongation curve for any fiber or textile material. Okay. Now, try to see here this is the typical curve I have drawn. So, and this curve is taken from almost this type of uh, fiber. Okay. So, here this is the straight point where the load increasing with the elongation with the linear increase. So, this is the Hooke's region. Okay. After that it is a yield point then after that there is a in ag in a again there is an increase in the stress uh, load okay. and this is the breaking point and at this point the material breaks. Okay. 
So, this point if we see this is the breaking elongation horizontal distance and vertical distance it is called breaking load. Okay. Let us see the animation here. this is elongation and this one is load. Okay. So, in load elongation curve at the point where there is a sharp bend it is called yield point okay. and this is the this is height it is a this is a breaking point and here from x x axis origin this is the breaking elongation and this is the breaking load the y axis distance is a breaking load. Okay. Now, if we see the stress strain curve this one is the load elongation curve if we see the stress strain curve the nature is almost same okay. and this the breaking point at this breaking point this height is called tenacity. Here it is called breaking load, but here it is called tenacity that is a breaking stress other term is tenacity and the horizontal distance is known as the breaking strain. So, this is the stress strain curve okay. and we can easily convert the load elongation curve to stress strain curve because if we know. So, if we want to convert the load elongation curve to stress strain curve what are the parameters required we must know the initial gauge length initial length. So, that we can calculate the load uh, elong uh, the stress from elongation okay. and for calculating the stress we must know the linear density and which linear density linear density that is initial length always one should remember here we have to divide the load with the initial initial uh, fineness initial linear density in text okay because as we increase as we extend the yarn or textile um, fiber textile material the text value changes okay text value but we don't take take care of that part we only divide by the initial initial linear density okay that's the process of measurement now next is that specific stress that's called mass stress so in as we have seen in textile material we cannot measure the stress in terms of load per unit cross section here specific stress is measured by the it is not the stress we call it as specific stress or mass stress. In this case we do not divide by the cross sectional area we divide it by the linear density as we have seen the linear density is proportional to the cross section. So, the value will be actually it is proportional we will get the indicative value, but the actual the numerical value may be different, but it is comparative value. Okay. So, in case of textile material the linear density is used instead of cross sectional set. So, we are we just we are we can observe in fineness we have observed that instead of cross sectional area we have converted it to linear density. Here also in stress we are we are converting the stress to specific stress. Okay. So, it allows it is also it also allows the strength of yarn of different linear densities to be compared. So, suppose let us say take one example one textile material say of 10 ticks 10 ticks 
has strength of say 100 Newton. Okay. Now, another material of say coarser material of 20 ticks. it has got the strength of 160 Newton. Okay. Now, how can we compare? If another if yarn was say 10 ticks and the strength was say 110 Newton, then we can say among these two yarn. So, A, B, C between A and B. So, this A is stronger. Okay, that we can see, but if we want to compare A and C, which one is stronger? Because here the complexity is that it's a, it's of different linear density. So to compare this, we convert this strength to the stress, the mass stress. So here the mass stress will be 110 by 10. So, that is 11 Newton per ticks. Whereas, this yarn, yarn C, it will have 160 by 20. So, it will have in 8, 8 Newton per ticks. So, that means, yarn A is stronger than yarn C in terms of specific strength. Although, the yarn actual breaking load is high. Actual breaking load is high in case of yarn C, but the which one is stronger strength wise the yarn A is stronger okay, because it has got higher specific stress. So, specific stress is equal to force per linear density which is initial linear density one should always remember it is a initial linear otherwise linear density always changes. Okay. Now, these are the different terminologies so, ill stress, ill strain, okay. this is the ill stress, ill strain tenacity, this I will just discuss. Okay. So, tenacity what is that? The specific stress at break that is the tenacity okay. or specific stress corresponding to the maximum force. Okay. This we should remember. So, we normally get confused that students get confused that which one is specific actual stress giving a curve. One has to actually identify when has to calculate the specific stress or tenacity. Okay. Tenacity is specific either specific stress at break or specific stress corresponding with the maximum force, okay. which one is higher that is the stress. Now, we can see from this two curve, this is the uh, with the this pink curve we can see that is this is the breaking point, okay. breaking. so and breaking point is the highest point that is why this stress this stress we can call it as tenacity, but the curve with the blue curve where after reaching the maximum point this we, are, we always observe this type of behavior in particularly in stapelian after reaching uh, this is this we observe for uh, filamentian okay. then because after breakage starts it does not break catastrophically due to sliding the slippage of fiber it also carries some load. Okay. So, after reaching to its maximum point where fibers start breaking then still it carries some load okay, for some time. So, here should we take the tenacity as this point or this maximum point. So, answer is that that we should take the tenacity for this case as the maximum point. Okay. Next term is that breaking length, 
what is that? It is the basically the length of the yarn by its own weight it will break. So, it is a theoretical value theoretically it is a theoretical length in kilometer of specimen of yarn whose weight would exert a force sufficient to break the specimen. So, theoretically if we see if we keep on unrolling from the space without any air disturbance in it is a vacuum if we if we actually imagine. So, if we keep on unrolling and till the yarn yarn on its own weight when it breaks the yarn that length is known as the breaking length and it is expressed in terms of kilometer. So, that is why breaking length is actually termed as r k m okay. r k m from the breaking. So, now let us see 10 takes yarn breaks at a load of 150 gram force that is the condition here one 10 takes yarn it is breaking at 150 gram force. What will be the breaking length in kilometer okay, breaking length. So, let us see. So, breaking length would be 15 kilometer because so we can see here 10 takes means 10 gram okay, 10 gram of yarn length will be 1 kilometer 1 kilometer yarn length 10 gram okay. that means 15 gram 150 gram is the force gram force will have 15 kilometer. So, so 15 kilometer is the 15 kilometer yarn will weigh 150 gram force it will exert force of 150 gram force. Okay. So, that is why it is called it is R came R came from breaking breaking and came is kilometer. So, R came is the term which we use normally and it is basically numerically the value is exactly same as that the gram per takes. So, this is the gram force it is gram force per take this is the gram force 150 we divide it by takes. So, 150 by 10 it is 15. <coughs> so, this two terms are exactly same and we can see in yarn trading nowadays it is called the breaking R k m value. So, R k m value means we do not actually measure the breaking length we measure the gram per takes and it is called R k m. Okay. Now, we must clearly understand the difference between strain and elongation. Okay. So, what is strain? Strain is the elongation by initial length, that is the ratio of elongation and initial length, that is the strain which is actually unitless, but elongation has got the unit of the length and extension percent or elongation percent what is that? The elongation and the ratio of elongation and initial length multiplied by 100 this is the extension. This terms elong strain elongation these are used in all any engineering material any material you can use it is not specific for textile material. And what is breaking ext extension that is the extension at which the material breaks. Now, what is gauge length? Gauge length is another term it is the length between the jaws okay. original length that of that portion of specimen under test. Now, let us see suppose this is our fabric specimen. Now, what we do? We use jaws top jaw we have gripped here at the top and bottom. What will be the gauge length? Gauge length will be actually 
actual length of the specimens under test. So, we do not consider the total fabric length, this is the specimen length and gauge length is less than that, okay. that is the gauge length. That is the original length of the material and between the jaws. Now, when it is extended, suppose it is extended to this point bef even before breakage. This is this has been extended. So, still this will be the gauge length. This gauge length is the initial length between the jaws. Now, now let us try to understand clearly the details of stress strain curve. What are the different parameters? Okay? We will try to understand with the help of animation. So, here the terms are initial modulus which is very commonly used in textile material or Young's modulus. <coughs> this is the modulus within Hooke's region where stress is proportional to the strain, straight line. So, up to the point A, this is where the this is there is a pro, uh, proportionality in that region if we measure the mod, uh, modulus that will be the initial modulus. So, it is expressed in terms so it is a tan theta that means, a a dash vertical distance by a a double dash. This is the this uh, ratio where which to express the initial modulus we can calculate. Now, if we extrapolate this curve, this line first for easy calculation that means, B B dash divided by B double dash B double dash. So, this is the stress divided by strain. Okay. So, that is the this is the tan theta okay. initial modulus the strain by stress. Okay. This one is the A A dash so, strain stress. So, this is A A dash is stress and A A double dash is strain. So, stress by strain we can get uh, this curve is stress strain curve. So, initially it is a straight line. So, that is why it is called initial modulus. Another term is called second modulus. So, initial modulus is one parameter which is actually useful to get the stress strain characteristics at the very initial level okay just to the modulus okay to know the what is the tough uh, modulus of the material but during its stress strain path one may like to know the stress strain okay modulus at any point okay that means the slope of stress strain line drawn between 0 point initial origin okay, and the sp any specific point D okay, of known stress or strain that is called the second modulus at that point. So, it is expressed at second modulus at certain strain. Okay second modulus of material at say x strain or x stress. So, again at this point we measure the stress divided by strain. Okay. So, that you take draw the vertical line stress and then horizontal line stress by strain that will give us the second modulus. Now, let us see. This is the typical stress strain curve. The line is being drawn okay, with the along with the initial line. A A dash is a stress and A A double dash is strain. 
So, here we can see the initial modulus tan theta is a a dash by a a double dash b b dash or b b double dash. <coughs> now, this is the point where sudden bent is there. Okay. So, that point is known as the yield point. Okay. This is the yield point and the distance. So, O <coughs> o c dash o c dash it is a yield stress okay this distance is yield stress and o c double dash is the yield so o c dash is yield strain and o c double dash is yield stress so this is the yield point okay so we can calculate the yield stress and yield strain this is the this is called yield point. Now, in a particular point is drawn. So, second modulus the slope of the straight line. So, this is exactly not showing, but, but slope of the straight line drawn between zone 0 and the and a particular specific point d. So, that is how we can get although it is uh, this uh, animation is not showing the tangent, but it is a tangent we can take it is a slope at any point oh, this is the slope. Okay. And here it is a breaking point okay. and this distance so O e O e dash is the breaking strain and O e double dash is the breaking stress. Okay. So, these are the terminology we can derive from the stress strain curve. Now, O a elongation is due to this is O a this at during this zone O a that is Hooke's region here the elongation is due to <coughs> the stretching of primary or secondary bonds. Okay. That means, it is not breaking the bonds, it is here only primary and secondary bonds are being stretched. Okay. As it, there is no breakage of bonds, so this will come back, this will return, these are totally recoverable and this is the Hooke's zone which is called elastic zone okay. because it within this O A zone there is no breakage of bond. Okay. Now, once it crosses what will happen? By further increasing the stress the curve bends sharply at C suddenly it bends where large strain is occurring with the small increase in stress. So, that it bends towards the x axis. So, large strain is occurring with the small increase in stress. This particular point is known as yield point okay. and O c O c dash is yield strain and O c double dash is yield stress. And after this after the yield point a plastic flow occurs breaking some secondary bonds. So, here there will be plastic flow that means, if it increases stress is increasing then there whatever the deformation the deformation will be plastic deformation. So, it will not come back okay, because 
there are breaking of some secondary bond okay. and during this due to breakage during the breakage of secondary bonds the molecular rearrangement takes place. Okay. So, what happened molecular molecule starts sliding there will be excess strain due to small increase in stress, but molecular rearrangement takes place during that time. Once the molecular rearrangement takes place that means, molecules are becoming straightened and rearranged once again then it will again try to insert impart some stress. So, that in that case the straining will be difficult. So, with the small strain again this stress will increase little bit. So, this rearrangement puts the material in a better position to withstand further stress. So, that means from this point onward. So, here the breakage is taking place. So, from C to say here D point any other point if it is asked what is happening between C to D. So, here what happens the secondary bonds breakage starts it takes place and molecular rearrangement is occurring. So, this e rearrangement puts the material in a better position to withstand further stress. So, here the material is little bit in better position then it is again it is increasing. So, otherwise what happened if he in this point so all the molecules starts breaking and the, uh, the bonds start breaking then it would have dropped here it, it, it have failed here, but it have here molecules are rearranged that means, it is again it is it has got capacity it gets capacity to actually take more load. So, that is why it is again increasing the nature of curve it varies it varies depending on the molecular structure of fiber or yarn. So, depending on the molecular structure this nature of curve changes. So, there are various factors on which this the nature of curve depends ok. As the molecular orientation it is more. So, then that means, the curve will be totally little bit stiff ok. Like molecular if we see the jute and cotton ok. Now, let us see. So, this is the these are three fibers natural fiber this is for wool this is for cotton this is for jute. So, this difference in nature it is basically due to the molecular structure ok. So, depending on the molecular structure the nature of curve changes see wool, polyester, cotton, flax. So, it changes depending on the, the molecular structure. So, flax has got very high modulus okay, due to the structural orientation of molecule. So, we will stop here and we will continue with this in the next class. Thank you.